Hey guys, this is Caspi with Dave, and today you join me for episode 28 of Road to Colonization, and we start at the Odin Station, getting rid of this little RCS tug, which is here for some reason, I don't know, this is an old station, but we need to free up a docking port so we can put the rest of the rocket parts on this station so that we can build the mothership. Yes, we are going to build it and see it today, because it's fantastic. Um, but yes, first we do the opening this, watching it explode gloriously into the atmosphere. Actually not explode, just kind of lose its solar panels and then sort of depressingly hit the ground. But now we need to uh, land this booster from last time, which sent up some crew to get some people out of, I want to say, the Concordia? Um, so yeah, we need to bring this back, and hopefully it won't hit the ground and explode. Hopefully this will land softly, um, because that is what rockets are supposed to do, uh, at least in this series, and some of the real world. Anyway, yeah, so it does its re-entry, and we've seen this rocket re-enter a lot of times, and it does it fine, and then lands. I did have to jettison the um, the fairings again to slow me down a little more, because they reduce drag way too much, so uh, yeah, we won't get the money back for that, but it doesn't really matter too much. And now we have another launch of one of these big containers of rocket parts, about 200 tons worth, um, with the uh, stage below it, it's about 300 tons to orbit, which I mentioned being difficult last episode, someone pointed out 300 tons is not that much. Well it is if you're trying to build a reusable single stage to orbit rocket, that makes it quite difficult, especially if you're using vector engines, because vector engines don't don't have a lot of drag. Anyway, but yes, this has been optimized a bit from last time, because last time we had a little trouble re-entering because uh, it just wouldn't slow down that much, but I realized I definitely didn't need such a big second stage on this, um, because that's just for orbital maneuvering, so I cut the size down on that a bit, I added a bunch more air brakes, I did a few things, and basically this should be much better and should definitely have an easier time re-entering, which is good, because these are about three quarters of a million a pop, just the, just the first stage, just the six cores, that's... About a quarter of a million, because I use these vector engines all the time, and they're so expensive, but they have such a high thrust-to-weight ratio, and they're only 2 point f no, 1.25 meter parts, which means I can get 5 on a booster. They're so useful, but so expensive, so if I don't reuse one of these, it kind of destroys the whole space program, because I don't have a lot of funds, because I'm playing on hard mode, which makes it just, uh harder to, to accumulate funds, and I'm also doing a series, so I can't grind quite as much. Anyway! Um, we've uh, deployed the fairings now, and you can see another one of these uh, rocket park containers. Again, slightly optimized. It has a little less uh, monopropellant and a few less solar panels. That's honestly just to keep the park count down, because I actually haven't fully upgraded the VAB right now, so um, I can only have 255 parts in a spacecraft, because the VAB upgrade on hard mode is really expensive, and I don't have any money. Anyway... After planning in my maneuver to meet up with the Odin station, we do the maneuver. We fire up our engine so we'll arrive in two orbits time, which will give me enough time to land the rocket. Um, so yeah, and it also saves fuel if we do it in a few orbits time. Um, you can see, after I find the target again, we do have our encounter. All will be good. But first, of course, the uh, rather risky, <laughs> kind of stressful uh, pursuit of bringing back this rocket. Um, we do our deorbit burn. Warp around the planet, and then we re-enter. Um, here we are, just entering, burning up, keep, kind of throttling the engines, just trying to keep the heating down. You can see we've got all the engines on the side. I'm just watching each of those heat gauges, and when some of them get too high, I fire up the engines. Um, now, I have about a kilometer per second of delta V left in this, which is more than enough for this uh, re-entry. So, this one actually wasn't very difficult at all, and I'm, well, was confident that I could do this twice more this episode. <laughs> I split them up a bit. But yeah, so uh, you can see we just... Uh, Keep firing up the engines. I do need to miss those mountains, though. I'm not super on board for, <laughs> with landing this on a mountain. Um, that doesn't seem like something that will be great. So when the heating stops, I uh, actually de-deploy the aero brake so that I uh, won't slow down too much uh, until I'm over the mountains. And then we come in for an extremely gentle landing. This is one of the best landings I've done because I have, well, a lot of fuel. This is a very reusable rocket because it keeps a huge amount of fuel after it's taken its payload to orbit, which is quite nice. Um, so yeah, anyway, then this approaches the station, we're slowing down so that we don't hit the station, given that this would uh, definitely destroy the station if it were to collide at high speed. Um, that would be quite interesting to see, actually, just um, like a gravity type situation. Anyway, then we uh, get nice and close to the docking port, drop the uh, second stage. This all takes a long time because it's a massive payload, and I actually don't have a ton of RCS thrusters on this. It does have some liquid fuel engines on it um, after the second stage, but those are for landing, because all of these need to come back, because 
we're gonna need some money <laughs> when this is all when everything's heading to jewel we're gonna need some money to carry on this space program so uh, these do have to come back and you can see we've made some progress um, building the mothership now we just need to bring the second stage back of course because this is also worth money and uh, all of this needs to be very reusable so that this mission fits within my budget of kind of four and a half million funds we're currently um, coming in uh, more like three and a half million so we should be fine but uh, yeah, only if we keep reusing things. This splatters down fine and all is good. And now we're launching another component of the dual mission. Of course, that's what we're doing now. We're getting ready for the dual mission. So this is part of fuel system two. Um, this is going to be the fueling station that sits around Bop. So this will just be kind of the fuel store, which will be fetched by the fuel shuttle to take it back to lathe. If you want to know the full architecture and you haven't seen last episode, go watch last episode. You'll understand all of the things. It's quite a big mission. But yeah, this is basically just a fuel station which will be pushed out to um, pushed out to Jewel by actually the fuel shuttle. It, they will launch together and they don't require a boost stage. I've been optimizing the mission a bit. So initially I was going to require a refuel for this mission to fill up everything. Um, for the for the fuel system mission, but uh, this will launch with full fuel, as will the um, the fuel shuttle itself, and they won't need a boost stage because the fuel shuttle just has an extra engine attached to it, so that it can push this all the way out to Bop, and they can set it set it themselves up there. So yeah, just a nice little optimization to the mission. That's what I like about big missions is you can make optimi optimizations like this. Um, and yeah, I'm using this twin boom rocket. I have used a design like this before um, to launch stuff. It does a pretty good job. Uh, I've basically transitioned away from my any of my old boosters because I'm launching a lot of heavy payloads and it's just easier to do it with SSTOs. Um, although, as I said, the vector engines have the problem that they don't induce enough drag so it's hard to slow down. But this does have some fuel left to slow down so should be fine-ish. So yes, this is the fuel station. It has a uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. Oh, you didn't actually see it for that long. But yeah, that has liquid fuel and oxidizer, monopropellant, and an ore container because we actually need ore for part of our life support system. Um, part of the life support system uses like this algae farm to generate stuff that we can, to generate organics, which we generate food from. And for some reason that requires ore. So yeah. Anyway, on the way back down with this rocket, we're slowing down nicely, um, but not enough. And uh, <laughs> to, uh, most of my engines explode, all but four. So, yeah, that's quite an expensive part of the rocket, but we still do have the engines, and now that we've lost those other engines, we actually have enough Delta V to land. So, uh, yeah, you know, silver linings. Um, this rocket just wasn't quite big enough. I did have SRBs on it at the start, but yeah. So, um, we're only going to get about 150 grand for back for this instead of, I think, about... 300 or 250 or something like that which isn't great but we can endure that cost you know and um, we'll make this slightly better for the next mission so we don't lose all the engines and we land and recover it before it has a chance to fall over and now for the next part of fuel system 2 the uh, fuel shuttle itself this is launching on the same vehicle but the payload is lighter so it should be able to uh, re-enter a little easily uh, a little with a little more ease um yeah you can see the solid rocket boosters there they drop away they're not reusable because they're just very cheap and i don't have to worry about that kind of thing see in real life a big pro big part of reusability is cutting down the time it takes to create rockets not just the cost um but obviously i can create rockets instantly in this game so i can you know i don't i i, I don't need to worry about every little thing too much but anyway we're getting on into orbit now um, just yeah, and and you can get a good look at the uh, fuel shuttle now. It has um, a big payload fuel tank there, um, the big liquid fuel noxidizer tank. That's how it will take. That's where the fuel that is mined will be taken from Bop to the station. Around the outside, it just has uh, some nuclear engines with liquid fuel. That's obviously its flight fuel. Below it, there is a detachable. Um, Rockamax engine that will be what pushes the whole system out to Jewel, um, but it will be detached after because it won't be needed because uh, Bop is a very low gravity world, so uh, it will be easier to land on that with just nuclear engines. So, yeah, anyway, we've got a maneuver laid in. We're gonna go and meet up with the station so we can dock nose to nose and be ready to head out to Jewel. I think this will be the first thing that will actually be fully ready to head out to Jewel, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, anyway, you can, we are using a little bit of our um, fuel to meet up, but we actually have a huge amount of Delta V given that we have a station full of fuel and this full of fuel. Um, it will more than it will have no trouble getting to Bop, um, at least hopefully, <laughs> unless I've uh, made some horrendous oversight. I have remembered that I've actually just uh, left the um, nose cone on the station, which I'll need to decouple before I dock. I launched these with no nose cones because they were relatively aerodynamic, so it made no sense to launch them with fairings, um, because that would just add mass and cost, which I wouldn't get back. So 
I thought it was probably just made sense to um, to to launch with nose cones instead and have them decoupleable. You shouldn't put everything in fairings. If something doesn't need to be in a fairing, you don't need to put it in because it costs money and it adds mass. And uh, yeah, so anyway. But here we are getting close now. BOP fuel station in all caps because I was in an all caps kind of mood when I made the station. Of course the uh, fuel systems will be vital for our survival around lathe if we want to come back or if we actually definitely for survival because we need ore to generate life support so uh, yeah we're gonna need to we're also gonna need to have a way of taking it to the ground from lathe orbit um, to take the ore down because that's where we're gonna be generating our life support anyway here we are just docking onto the front now you can see the two spacecraft just uh, Looking rather nice together, two big ass spacecraft which will uh, be able to store all the fuel we'll need. This uh, station actually does have engines of its own only for emergencies though. Anyway, we bring the rocket back now, just uh, taking a look at re-entry. And we do lose a couple of engines as you'll see in a second, but we only lose two instead of six. So that's, that's a victory <laughs> this time. <laughs> Last time we lost six, this time we lost two. That's called optimization when only two engines explode. <laughs> yeah, but still, it's better and, you know, we'll, we'll keep working on it, although we probably won't be using this rocket too much again. Um, but now we're just landing on the grass again, and it lands, yeah, it lands fine. I recover it quickly, just in case it does fall over, because uh, we don't want to have it smash into the ground, and it did look like it was going to fall over right there. Anyway, now for another launch. Yes, there will be many launches this episode, and this one is more rocket parts, because now we have pretty much enough rocket parts on the station to build the mothership, but not enough to fuel the mothership. We need to mostly fuel the mothership uh, as we build it, uh, because that way we don't have to ship up as much fuel. However, it won't be fully fueled, because I think I just misread some numbers, and it's only going to be like a third fueled, so I'll actually have to send up some fuel. So next episode will probably also be just prepared for Jewel. This is a big mission. If you didn't see the architecture from last episode, like I said, you should definitely go back and check that out. Or just the architecture bit if you if you want. Just to get an idea of all the stuff we're launching here. Because there's a mothership, there's the Concordia, which is the transport, there's the uh, fuel system 1, which is actually more complicated than just a fuel system. There's fuel system 2 that we launched, there's the um, lathe SSTOs, there's the miner, there's something else, the freighter, the base, you know, there's a lot of stuff. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. But I imagine most people watch this as a series, but uh, there might be a pretty thumbnail of a spaceship with an artificial gravity ring in this episode. So, I don't know, maybe some people will come in and be like, what's going on here? Uh, anyway. Now we're just pushing on into orbit and actually doing quite well for fuel. I've launched three of these now, including this. There was the one last episode which had a lot of trouble re-entering because it didn't really have enough fuel. That made it to orbit with 10,000 units of fuel still left in the lower stage, the big rocket. Um, the last one we did this episode that had 12,000 and now there's about 13,500 units left over in the rocket. So clearly we're getting better at flying it and it is optimized from last episode. So uh, yeah, it keeps getting better at doing its job. Anyway, now we're just setting up our encounter with um, with the station again in two orbits time, so we have enough time to safely land the booster before this flies past the station. Um, and once again, we land on the, on the glass land. Yeah, it's all glass. You've got to be very careful while landing here. It's all made of glass. Uh, it's it's horrendous. I don't know how it happened, I uh, but yeah. <laughs> no, in the grass land. And you saw it landed fine, if very sped up, but yeah, there we go. Anyway, and then we bring back the second stage nicely into the green of the VAB. It's like playing golf, but with very expensive rockets. And it touches down very gently and then falls over and probably damages a bunch of computing parts. And then we launch another one of these, because we need four of these to make ourselves a big mothership with lots of fuel in it, because, well, it's a big mothership, yo. It's 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 huge. Um, <laughs> well, it's actually, I mean, there's, there are bigger ships in KSP, but it's big. It's got a lot of fuel in it. It's got a lot of life support. It's got a whole gravity ring. Anyway. Uh, so yes, this just does a standard launch trajectory. This launch is about the same as last time. It has a tiny bit more fuel than uh, the last one we sent, I think, when it gets to orbit, so it re-enters fine. But yeah, this rocket has become very viable. I built it kind of as a custom rocket just for this dual mission, but I think it's actually just a really good rocket. I might continue to use this, at least for very large payloads. It could even replace the Pulsar Z. I think that's the name of it. I think the Pulsar Z is the expanded version of the Pulsar Y, which is basically kind of like a big Saturn V, actually, the Pulsar Y. It's got five of these vector engines, it's a two-stage rocket, and it, you know, takes stuff to orbit, whereas the uh, 
Pulsar Z, the Pulsar Z? Yeah, Pulsar Z is just basically that with a bunch of outer fuel tanks and six engines. It's just a bigger rocket, but I think this could replace that. I mean, it is it is very expensive if you fuck up, but it is also easier to reuse because it's an SSTO. So it might actually be cheaper, but it does use a lot of fuel. Hmm. I'll have to find out, I guess, because it, it does use a ridiculous amount of fuel to uh, bring 300 tons to orbit. But it is a very safe method when you have uh, this level of reusability. Um, anyway, yes, so this is in orbit, and we do all the standard things. This is gradually getting more and more edited as, uh, <laughs> as we do more of these, so you don't have to sit through the same thing each time. And then once again, we land this on the glasslands. Yeah, just... Just got to be real gentle on that glass, and I am. This is at four times speed, and that was gentle as hell. And there was a cactus there. I do like the random bits of scenery in KSP. Anyway, that is all of the rocket parts. We have it there. We have almost built all of this. That's a lot of rocket parts, but apparently not enough. I didn't bring enough, apparently. Um, but yes, and then we land this on the green again, and all is good. But back in orbit, we finally have our ship built after another week of time warping. And there you go, we can see it, we just build it in orbit, it pops in, kind of unceremoniously. But yeah, you can get a nice look at it now. Um, I did fill it with fuel, um, with, and I used apparently all of the rocket parts, but the rocket parts I used to put the fuel in it are still on the station. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna build some more ships up here because I have the rocket parts and apparently the fuel's basically free. You just have to have enough rocket parts for it. Anyway. This takes flight now. Uh, apparently it is autonomous. I don't remember making it autonomous, but uh, this is an autonomous spacecraft. So it flies away from the station to reduce the horrific lag. Because Odin Station is very big with those rocket parts now, and this has got quite a lot of parts. But now you can get a really nice look at it. So this, this is the mothership. I haven't named it yet. I might take names. I might come up with names. If you have a name, leave it in the comments. Often you guys come up with the best names. So like I said, leave it in the comments. But yes, this will be the ship which basically its sole purpose is just to take the Kerbals out there. It's got a lot of living space in that gravity ring, more than it needs, but uh, I do like to add more space than is absolutely necessary. The pilot will sit in the cupola, of course, um, which gives him a nice uh, nice viewing angle. Or her, women can be pilots too, guys. Um, you can see it has this massive core kind of liquid fuel and oxidizer which powers the big engine, which gives it enough thrust and delta V to leave Kerbin. And then the nuclear engines are for obviously high efficiency maneuvering where we don't have to be quite as quick. It has a big docking ring just behind the gravity ring so that we can bring small bits of things to Jewel and also if any craft needs to dock with it, we can just do that. All of its solar panels are on the back they don't stick out or anything. And you can see the life support nice and kind of tucked into the spacecraft. I quite like how that came out. Now this isn't obviously the prettiest spacecraft ever built. I'm not that kind of designer, but I'm quite proud of this. I quite like it. I think it's much nicer than um, the, Ca the Canterbury. I think the Canterbury kind of get the... I don't really like how it looks, but yeah. Anyway, so yes, that is the episode. We've uh, launched quite a lot of stuff. Next episode we'll be launching the planes. Basically everything else. The planes, the minor, the stuff, some fuel, I don't know man, we're gonna launch the things, it's gonna be great, then we're gonna go to Jewel and colonize the hell out of it, you can see our fleet is growing in, uh, growing in size, and we'll be, uh, yeah, colonizing Jewel in the uh, near future, but anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this, this has been episode 28 of Road to Colonization, I will see you next time.